Hi, everyone. I wanted to welcome everyone to uh, chapter three. So in chapter three, we're going to go over constructive solid geometry. Um, <clears throat> the main thing about the key term constructive solid geometry is that um, it really came out in the 1980s uh, where um, CAD had evolved from just 2D drawings to more three dimensional objects. And one of the key things that you have to um, um, know about constructive solid geometry is that all complex shapes are made up of simple shapes. So um, at this point, uh, what what was happening is that there were uh, solid models that were made up of a basic, what they would call primitive solids. And you'd see uh, uh, blocks, cylinders, cones, spheres, and uh, tubes. And if you um, if you look at the textbook, they kind of give you good good illustrations of those of those things. And like I said, uh, we'll, we'll go through a um, uh, an exercise in chapter three. I'll, I'll follow the textbook and uh, I'll show you what that means. Um, <clears throat> another thing that um, that you'll you'll notice in the textbook, they talk quite a bit about Boolean operations. And Boolean operations, um, for the most part, they're just a couple of them that that you that are used a lot in computer-aided design, and those are um, cutting, right, joining, and intersections. Intersection just means that the, it, it, you only keep the volume between two different objects, okay? Um, but for the most part, SolidWorks uh, uh, does a lot of joining and a lot of cutting. Uh, not so much intersections, but you can, you can use it, all right? Uh, but again, the Boolean operation that keeps the volume common to two solid objects is the intersect, all right? Uh, and also in this particular chapter, what I'm going to go into is uh, how to use the whole wizard. All right. So in this particular part, one of the key things I want to do is just make sure that I'm in millimeters, grams, and seconds. Also the document units. Um, I always set them up to be ANSI, right? Everything's in ANSI. Mm -hmm. Just double checking. Uh, what I like to say is trust but verify. All right. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this part on the top plane, create a new sketch. Um, let me look at this text here. Uh, it's 50 by 75. I know the text has it where um, they uh, they use the grid. I don't like to use the grid so much. I feel like it gets in the way. So here, 50 units or 50 millimeters uh, by 75. Notice that there's two numbers beyond the decimal point in the text. They actually don't have two units beyond the decimal point. They only have one. Um, they don't have any. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Okay. Um, we're going to extrude this. So this would be uh, just a simple extrusion. And just to confirm, this is uh, how tall is this? 15 millimeters. All right. We got this simple rectangle. Next, what we're going to do is from the bottom, create a new sketch, control eight or normal two, do another circle or a circle here. Um, I'm going to click it on the midpoint, right? Notice how that showed up. And then the edge there, click and notice what happens. Fully defined, right? That's because this is 50 millimeters. Exit sketch. Now, next one I'm going to do, I'm going to extrude this. It's going in the wrong direction, right? And I'm going to go up. Uh, let me see how high is this going to go. This is going to go, um, looks like 40 millimeters tall. Always want to make sure that it's a merge result, right? Control seven does the isometric view. So here, now you have a merge result. If you don't have the merge result, you're gonna have another cylinder here. And so you'll notice that technically they are not joined, right? So that is a Boolean operation. You are joining them when you do a merge result, okay? Here at the top, create a new sketch, control eight. If you click on the circle and then you hover over the edge of the circle, you have a cross mark there down in the center. Create another circle. Smart to mention that. And this should be a, um, let's see, let me flip the page here, 30 millimeters. Press OK. You can always do Control 7 so you can see it. 
right? Exit sketch, extrude cut. It should automatically select it. Um, and remember, if from the last discussion, you can do blind, you can do through all, up to next, okay? There it is. Okay, so that, that would be a cut, all right? Now at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the whole wizard on this surface, all right? I'm gonna go to whole wizard. Okay, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on the whole wizard than the textbook does. And I just wanna show you all the different types of holes that, are, that show up. Here we have a counter bore, right? A counter bore just means that you have two diameter holes, right? You have a counter sink, oh, excuse me. You have a counter sink. So the counter sink just means that the uh, bigger diameter hole uh, basically has a slant or an angle towards the smaller diameter hole. Here's a simple hole. Doesn't let me just like click on them, right? Here, this is a straight tap or a threaded hole. So if you wanted to add a screw, um, you'd be able to do that. Here, you got a taper tap, right? So uh, it would be like a pipe thread. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna skip these, but uh, for the most part, there's a slot, a countersink slot, and a counterbore slot, all right? But the common ones that we're gonna use in this class, counterbore, countersink, simple hole, and tap, these four up here. You'll notice that you also have different standards, American National Standard Inch. We also have American National Standard Metric. You'll notice that there's uh, British units, German units, all right, uh, international system organization units, uh, Japanese units, all kinds of different units that represent um, threads um, and, and slots and uh, simple uh, holes, right? So in this, in, in this instance, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, we're going to do a simple hole. We're going to do American national standards for metric. And we're going to keep this at, let's see, what, what do they say? Hole specification, ANSI metric drill type, and it should be drill size. So now what you're, noti what you're going to notice is that you have a, a several types of drills that are available to us, right? You always want to stick, whenever you're uh, designing something, stick to um, standard uh, drill sizes. And the way you find a standard drill size, you'd want to um, look at a, a uh, drill chart. So here we're going to scroll down to a 20 millimeter dr uh, drill. All right. Um, here, show custom sizing. We don't have to show custom sizing. That's a standard drill. And through all, right? Here, there's two different options. Near side countersink, so that on the front side, you're going to have a slant or angle. And the far side, you're going to have... Uh, or on the back end, you're gonna have uh, another uh, countersink, okay? Down here, you got different diameters and callouts, okay? Um, callout values for the tolerances, if you're gonna set those up, uh, that's not necessary for now. Uh, make sure that these are unclicked, all right? Now, the main thing about using uh, the hole specification or the hole wizard is that once you draw the hole on the part, if you, then create a drawing from the part uh, from this particular part using the whole wizard. All this information that you input in the whole wizard will come up in the drawing. So it saves you quite a bit of time. If you do a lot of the front end work here, you won't have to document every hole or depth of a hole or a thread of a hole or a class of a hole. And we're going to get into thread classes later on in about chapter 13 or 14. So, um, uh, we'll, we'll, t we'll talk more about threads and taps. So next, what you want to do is 3D sketch. Once you decide for the decide the hole, so here we're going to do a through all. Uh, interestingly enough, when I click on it, 3D sketch, you'll notice that the hole itself looks a little weird, uh, but there it is. Let's do a control eight real quick. And then I'm going to measure it where it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be 25 from the edge, uh, 30 from that edge, sorry, and 25 from this edge. So remember, everything has to be fully defined. Whenever you draw a hole, you always have to give it the X location and the Y location, fully defined. So those are the things you're always looking out for, okay? So now that end condition means it's going to go through. 
exit sketch, and there's your hole. Notice that the, uh, the information is now populated here. It's a 20 inch diameter hole. So again, this is gonna show up on your drawing. It's not gonna be uh, just a cut hole, right? So here, you're gonna have to dimension it on uh, the drawing. Here, you're just gonna say draw uh, hole call out, and it's gonna pull up all the information for that hole that you specified. All right, next, uh, do a new sketch on that surface, Control-8. We're gonna do a rectangle. All right, and then we're gonna smart dimension that square. Here, I got 15 millimeters from the edge, 20 millimeters across, and there it is, it's fully defined. It's fully defined because it constrained, here you notice it's coincident, horizontal and vertical, and another coincident constraint, all right? Exit sketch. Now what we're gonna do is do an extrude cut. Right? Make sure, sometimes they may not select it. So there's two ways of selecting a sketch. You can either uh, select it through here, through this drop-down menu here, like so. Right? Now the cut extrude uh, property shows up. What I'm gonna do is up to next. So now it's just gonna cut up to the next feature that SOLIDWORKS sees. Press OK. Great. So if you follow directions, um, this part should have been uh, pretty easy to see and pretty easy to develop. Uh, let's just double check and let's evaluate it. Let's do a mass property analysis and it's 80.43 grams. All right, so that's that part. So again, um, uh, this is constructive sol solid geometry that, that uh, that we're going to be doing a lot of in this class. So again, all basic parts, I mean, all complex parts, I would say, are made up of basic uh, parts or shapes. Uh, remember, when we're looking at things, I've, I noticed that some of the discussion, um, so this would be the front view. Uh, generally, what we consider the front view, the front view shows you the most description of a part. Um, if I were to show you the hidden lines, it kind of shows you quite a bit of the part, right? Uh, that would be the top view, so the front, right side view, left side view, right? Isometric. So you kind of want to remember that. The front view shows you the most, the most description of a part. Um, it may not always translate in SOLIDWORKS, uh, but generally when you look at drawings, the front view is usually the principal view where you see most of the geometry, all right? Um, if we'll work through these questions uh, at the end of the chapter one through uh, seven, and there's a couple of them that are kind of tricky at first. So spend uh, spend some time working through the problems. Again, I'm going to set up the uh, the mass on each of those parts. When you see them in inches, they're going to be in pounds. When you see them in metric, they're going to be uh, uh, in grams. So just uh, keep an eye out uh, an eye out for that. Um, so I'll set these up hopefully soon and have this uh, presentation for you ready uh, by tonight. Again, uh, I just wanna remind everyone that most of my deadlines, again, they're just benchmarks. Everyone's gonna come in with a different set of, uh, of abilities. Some students already have a CAD experience like uh, with Autodesk Inventor or maybe AutoCAD. So this will be um, um, just a different way of doing things. Um, so those people who, who do have experience, you'll probably be able to get through this a lot faster. But if you're brand new to this, uh, don't worry about the deadlines. What I want you to mostly worry about is just learning. Ask as many questions as possible. I'm going to try to set it up where, where, uh, where, where, the, where the discussion forum is lively and vibrant, which it has been. Uh, today I noticed that there was a lot of discussion questions, and, and um, I, I try to make it easier by... Um, by opening up a conference so I can answer as many questions as possible. Um, but again, please feel free to reach out via Canvas, help each other out, and everyone was doing that. And that was really fantastic because the more you share in terms of um, uh, what you know, uh, it really kind of solidifies your learning. Uh, so I strongly encourage uh, you to, to share because it, it's, it's one of the higher order of uh, thinking, um, uh, I would say, forms of, of showing that, that you know how to do something. 
So with that, I'll, I'll end this discussion for today. Um, I hope to see you guys soon.